the Lord be with you. Good morning and welcome to Jerusalem Presbyterian Church on this beautiful Sunday morning. Do we have any announcements before we begin? Two weeks from today, the Ding Dongs will resume rehearsals. Um, rehearsals will be after worship service. Um, if you want to be a Ding Dongs, they will let you in. So we have five octaves now um, in house. Our biggest bell is bigger than my head, literally. So um, we'll need peeps. So come see me if you're interested. Uh, to play with the Ding Dongs, and if you're interested in singing with the choir, even though they started, you're still welcome. So, come see me. As you, as you can tell here, there is no communion table. So, we're going to get into later in the service why we're not actually having communion today. It was a change that occurred this morning, so when we get to the prayers of the people, we'll talk more about it. But just so you know, the back half of the worship service is going to be reconfigured from what you see in the bulletin to be how we normally do it. So... Just roll, yeah, exactly, Don. Second half of the, the service, just chuck the bolt in the side and go with the flow, which we know you're great at. So go with the flow, everybody, second half of the service, and we'll explain more in a couple minutes. Good morning. Please join me in the call to worship. Oh, Lord, you have searched me and known me. You discern my thoughts from far away. For a word is on my tongue. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. I mirrors, O oh God. I try to count them. They are more than the sand. Let us worship God. Please join me in the prayer of confession. O oh, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy upon us as we make our confession. We grow lax in our discipline and we disobey Christ. Our faith wanes put to the test. Our courage vanishes in the peace of temptation. Our joints stiffen when we are called to act. We profess loyalty while our bodies deny commitment. Have mercy on us, for forgive us our sins. We pray in Christ's name, amen. The mercy of God is from everlasting to everlasting. God is the Alpha and the Omega has heard our confession. We are forgiven. May the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Please pass the peace to your neighbor. The first reading is from Deuteronomy 6, verses 1 through 9. Now, this is the commandment, the statutes, and the ordinances, that the Lord your God charged me to teach you to observe in the land that you are about to cross into and occupy so that you and your children and your children's children may fear the Lord your God all the days of your life and keep all his decrees and his commandments that I am commanding you so that your days may be long. Hear therefore, O Israel, and observe them diligently. 
so that it may go well with you and so that you may multiply greatly in a land flowing with milk and honey as the Lord, the God of your ancestors, has promised you. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. Keep these words that I am commanding you today in your heart. Recite them to your children and talk about them when you are at home and when you are away, when you lie down and when you rise up. Bind them as a sign on your hand Fix them as an emblem on your forehead and write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. So ends the reading. Our gospel reading today comes from the gospel according to Matthew from the fifth chapter, the 13th through 20th verses. Listen for God's word. Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but it's thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hidden. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand and gives light to all the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter, will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. To begin, I need you to know that the, the sermon today is going to get pretty meta pretty quick. What does that mean? I, I describe something as meta when instead of talking about the thing, we wind up talking about how we talk about the thing. Does that make sense? Instead of talking about the thing, we wind up talking about how, we're actually doing it right now, right? We're talking about how sermons come together instead of actually the sermon. So, but hopefully you'll stick with me as we traverse the meta part of the sermon because I think there's value and insight and, and hopefully wisdom waiting for us on the other side. So let's begin. Today the lectionary is the second segment in what we call the Sermon on the Mount. The, the Sermon on the Mount is the really long section in Matthew, starting in Matthew 5. There are all teachings of Jesus. Last week was the first section, the Beatitudes. And this week, the attention turns to the next set that we call Salt and Light, and also the, the section on Jesus as the fulfillment of the prophets. Now, we're not going to talk about the fulfillment of the prophets today. It's more of a connectional piece. It leads to many of the statements that people think about when they think about the Sermon on the Mount. You have heard it said, blank, but truly I tell you, blank. That, that's going to be in a couple weeks we're going to get into that. We're not going to talk about it here. What we are going to talk about is the salt passage. You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. What does that mean? Well, well, let's break it down. Why, what does it mean when Jesus calls us the salt of the earth? The salt of the earth, what that means is Jesus is saying, I know that you're good, honest people. You don't need to prove it to me, I know that, is what Jesus is saying. But then Jesus says, basically, but being good is not enough if you've lost it, right? 
Salt isn't good if it's lost its taste. Being good is not enough if you've lost it. Lost what? Well, the what can be interpreted as any number of things. Passion. Integrity. Faith. Focus. Direction. Courage. To me, that last one probably fits the bill best. Courage. Jesus is telling us, you're good people, no doubt. But that's little good if you don't have the courage of your faith. If we don't live lives of courageous faith, then what's the point? Jesus is telling us. So what does it mean to have courage? To live courageously. Earlier in the week, I had a clear direction and example for this part of the sermon. This is where the meta part comes in. But through it, I, 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 though I believe every word of it, I knew what I was going to say would ruffle some feathers. What I originally felt called to talk about was the banning of books in Florida, in school libraries. The new legislation says that only books by, approved by the state can be in school libraries, and any teacher who doesn't comply can be charged with a felony. Learning is good. Challenging students with new and different ideas is good. Banning books in general is bad. It usually means you're on the, the bad side of history or the wrong side of history. I, I can't believe we're having this conversation in 2023. That was the sermon that was going to happen, but that's not the sermon. Because I chickened out. I didn't write that sermon. I backed off of the idea because of the heat it might cause. And so, yeah, in writing a sermon about courage, I didn't have enough of it. I chickened out. That's, the hypo that's a hypocritical thought. But enough with the meta. If the sermon doesn't go there, then where? Where does it leave us? Well, first of all, I'm left with this quote by Ben Kremer, who's a pastor and a writer. And earlier this week, he wrote, Christianity should look, a lot, should look more like questions in search for answers, not answers that aren't allowed to be questioned. That's where I am with this question of how to have courage and faith. I've got more questions than answers. We're asking the questions. We're searching for the answers, not vice versa. And this is what it means to have courage and faith, to be the salt that has not lost its taste. Taste. We're not to be milk toast in our beliefs. We're to be a community of faith that has a direction, a point, a passion. We don't come here each week to be unchanged. We don't come here each week just to be entertained. But rather the opposite. We come here to have our passions sharpened that we might live our faith better. Jesus' teachings about the salt could be placed along with an old cliche, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. We need to have courage and we need to guard ourselves from slipping into a world without purpose or vision or passion or point. We need to be a congregation, not just a social club. Now. We're not in any danger of that, don't hear me wrong. But it's good to remember our passions. And so here's the trick, because I knew that Zach was waiting for a trick. <laughs> the trick is having purpose and passion and courage does not require us to have these things about everything. Too often in our world, our world tells us you have to care about everything. And if you don't care about everything, you're a bad person. That's not true. Each person is finite in our passion, in our purpose, in our focus, in our point. The point is to pick something, to do something, to be passionate about something. Each little thing helps, and it can change the world piece by piece. 
I've long held the belief that as a pastor, it's much easier to help guide people if they already have their passion. To help shape it, to help get other people on board, to help push them in a good direction, to help walk with them. It's much harder as a pastor to instill passion in somebody that doesn't have it. The same is true for courage. Having courage is what the second half of the salt and light passage is all about. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hidden. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under the bushel basket but on the lampstand. And it gives light to the whole house. In the same way, let your light shine before others. Too often, we make the mistake of not showing our faith to others. For fear of being judged, or fearing it's the wrong time, or it won't be appreciated. But Jesus is telling us that the only time we fail is when we don't shine. When we aren't courageous. When we don't have passion or purpose. When we've lost our taste. So what is your passion? What is your purpose? What mission do we have? We can do many things. We can help many people. I'm so grateful for the work of the deacons in collecting warm clothes for the Hope Center throughout January. That was a huge success. Cindy made numerous trips to drop clothes off. They saw a need. We jumped in and we helped. I asked Nettie and Sally to help me serve a meal for college students on a Sunday afternoon in Madison, and we had so much fun with it, we're going to do it again at the end of April. Jerry's putting together a group interested in working with Habitat for Humanity in Waukesha. Later this winter, we're going to be assembling hygiene kits as a part of a worship service as we support disaster assistance. All these things are because somebody had a passion. Somebody said, here's where I can help. And then they did it. So what's next? What's your passion? When looking for a passage uh, to pair with our gospel reading, this week I, I fell back on one of the most important scriptures in the whole Old Testament. And it's one that's a personal favorite of mine. The Shema. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your might. We love God with our whole heart and soul and might by being courageous and passionate in our faith. But I'll tell you, that's only partially why I love the Shema. Because it continues, keep these words that I'm commanding you today in your heart. Recite them to your children and talk about them when you are at home and when you are away, when you lie down and when you rise. I'm going to end with a story, and I've probably told this story before, and if you remember it, forgive me, but I love it. Growing up at my home church, there was an older gentleman named Milt Hunter. Every Sunday, he would faithfully put his offering in the offering plate. I'm not sure, sure how the conversation came about, but one time, Mr. Hunter was talking with the church treasurer, who told him, you know, Milt, you can give once a month. You can even give once a year if you wanted. You don't need to do it weekly. And Mr. Hunter's response, I never want the plate to go by and have a child not see me give. Now, I'll tell you, we live in a different world. I don't put anything in the plate anymore. I give online. I give monthly. That's not the point. The point is to Mr. Hunter teaching the next generation how to give to be generous, that was a passion of his. But we can all be like Milt Hunter. Because here's the thing, Mr. Hunter, he died like, I don't know, two decades ago? But I still remember the lesson. We can teach our courage to the next generation. And we can teach our passion to the next generation and the generation after that. We can show our passion and our purpose for the whole world to see. We have that power 
we can do that with God's help. To God be the glory. Amen. Great Lord, we pray for all those we've mentioned today. We've prayed for all those who've had loved ones and, and uh, friends, loved ones who have died in the past couple weeks. We pray prayers of compassion for them, uh, prayers that families may find healing during unspeakably difficult times. We lift up Stephen and we lift up the whole uh, O'Connell family and extended family and just ask for you to be with them during these hours and these next few days. We ask that you be with uh, all those who are undergoing treatments, whether it's for cancer or other ailments. We ask that you be with their caregivers as well. We pray prayers of joy, joys of, of simple gifts like our passions or the passions of our grandchildren. We're grateful for, for Jenna's birthday today and we're with all those who are celebrating this day, birthdays and anniversaries and other kinds of celebrations. We ask that you be with all of our loved ones that are in the hospital or are alone or need your care in many, many different ways. We pray for your whole church. We pray for all those who call on your name that, that we all may have your courage and your strength and your generosity. We pray for all peoples as well, especially for our leaders that they may make decisions that lift up your goodness and your generosity. We pray not just what I've spoken out loud, but we pray the prayers that are deepest within each of our hearts. We pray all of this in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Mother and Father of us all. And we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Lord, give us passion. Lord, be our courage. For we are each children of God. Let's live that out this week. So friends, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all and all those whom you love and all those whom God calls you to love. From now until our Lord comes again in glory. Amen.